Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is a 2007 fantasy film directed by David Yates and distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures. It is based on J.K. Rowling's 2003 novel of the same name. It is the fifth installment in the Harry Potter film series, and it was written by Michael Goldenberg, making this the only film in the series not scripted by Stephen Cloves. It was also produced by David Heyman and David Barron. The film stars Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter, alongside Rupert Grint and Emma Watson as Harry's best friends Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. Its story follows Harry's fifth year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, as the Ministry of Magic is in denial that Lord Voldemort has actually returned. The film is sequel to Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and is followed by Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Live-action filming took place in England and Scotland for exterior locations and at Levenston Film Studios in Watford for interior locations from February to November 2006, with a one-month break in June. Post-production on the film continued for seven months afterwards to add in the visual effects. The film's budget was reportedly between £75 million to £100 million, pounds, or $200 million. Warner Brothers released the film in North America on the 11th of July 2007 and the United Kingdom on the 12th of July, both in conventional and IMAX theatres. It is the first part of film to be released in IMAX 3D. Order the Phoenix opened to a worldwide five-day opening of $333 million, 25th of all time, and grossed $942 million in total, second to the Pirates of the Caribbean at the world's end for the greatest total of 2007. The film was nominated for two BAFTA Film Awards in 2008 and has been noted as a case of Hollywood accounting because of Warner Brothers claimed the film lost $167 million despite its total grosses. British television director David Yates was chosen to direct the film after Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire director Mike Newell had dropped out. Yates believed he was approached because the studio saw him fit to handle an edgy and emotional film with a political backstory, which some of his previous television projects including State of Play, Sex Traffic and The Girl in the Café demonstrated. Stephen Cloves, the screenwriter of the first four Potter films, had other commitments and therefore couldn't commit to writing this one. Michael Goldenberg, who was considered to pen the first film in the series, filled in and wrote the script. Clove subsequently returned, writing all of the remaining installments in the series. Most of the main cast returned for this film, but some new additions included Helena Bonham Carter as Bellatrix Lestrange, one of Voldemort's most loyal Death Eaters and the cousin of Sirius Black. Persistent Rubens linked Elizabeth Hurley to the role of Bellatrix Lestrange, although Warner Brothers asserted there was no truth whatsoever to the reports that she'd be cast. As early as August 2005, rumours began linking Helen McCrory to the role. On the 2nd of February 2006, it was announced that McCrory had indeed been cast as Bellatrix. However, in April 2006, she revealed that she was three months pregnant and withdrew from the film because she would have not been able to perform the intense battle sequences in the Ministry of Magic in September and October of 2006. The announcement that Bonham Carter had been recast in the role was made on 25th of May 2006. McCrory would subsequently be cast as Narcissia Malfoy from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince onwards. Returning cast members included Robbie Coltrane as Rupert Hagrid, Ray Fiennes as Lord Voldemort, Michael Gambon as Albus Dumbledore, Brendan Gleeson as Mad-Eye Moody, Richard Griffiths as Vernon Dursley, Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy, Gary Oldman as Sirius Black, Alan Rickman as Severus Snape, Fiona Shaw as Petunia Dursley, Maggie Smith as Professor McGonagall, David Thluellis as Remus Lupin, Emma Thompson as Sybil Trelawney, and Julie Walters as Molly Weasley. Yvonne Lynch was cast in the role of Luna Lovegood after over 15,000 girls attended open casting calls, waiting in line with hopefuls and stretched a mile long. Shersha Ronan was considered for the role, but was considered too young. Another new addition to the cast was of course Emilda Staunton as Dolores Umbridge, the new Defence Against the Dark Arts teacher and a plant from the corrupt Ministry of Magic. Staunton was the producer's only choice for the role of Professor Dolores Umbridge. She and costume designer Janie Tamay came up with the idea of making her dress more padded and more saturated as the movie progresses. The novel describes her as being physically chubby like a toad. An interesting fact about the cast, of course, was Ebba Watson, who was seriously thinking about whether or not to keep acting in the franchise after this instalment, but decided to say, after considering that it would be uncomfortable to watch movies being made with someone else, as Hermione. Now let's talk about the differences from the book. At 766 pages in the British edition and 870 in the American edition, Order of the Phoenix is the longest book in the Harry Potter series by far. However, the film is the second shortest. Screenwriter Michael Goldenberg described his task to cut down the novel as searching for the best equivalent way to tell the story. My job was to stay true to the spirit of the book, rather than to the letter. Goldenberg had said that Rowling had told him, the producers and Yates, that she just wanted to see a great movie, and gave them permission to take whatever liberties they felt they needed to, 
in order to translate the book into movie she would love. Cutting down the book to meet the time frame of the film, Goldenberg explained it became clearer when he figured out that organizing the principle of screenplay was to narrate Harry's emotional journey. He and Yates looked for every opportunity to get everything they could in there, and where they couldn't, to sort of pay homage to it, to have it somewhere in the background, or to feel like it could have been taking place off screen. One cut Goldenberg had to make, which he hated to do, was the absence of Quidditch, the wizarding sport. The truth is that any movie made of this book, whoever had made it, that if they included the Quidditch subplot, it would have been a lesser film, Goldenberg said. In the book, Ron grows as a character by trying out for the Quidditch team. Ron faces challenges and is coming into his own in the same way that Harry is, and we try to get that into the film in other ways as much as possible. So if you feel like, if not the details of that story, at least the spirit of it is in the film, said Goldenberg. The change disappointed actor Rupert Grint, who had been quite looking forward to the Quidditch stuff. In a significant scene in the book, Harry sees a memory of his own father humiliating Snape in their school days, and Snape insulting his mother after she stood up for him. In the film, it is abbreviated to an idea in Goldenberg's words. It is an iconic moment when you realise your parents are normal, flawed human beings. These things get trimmed out, but I kept the meat of that in there. And that was what really gave me the coming-of-age story. Young Lily Potter did not appear at all, but promotional screenshots show an unknown teenager, Susie Shiner, in the role. The scene at St. Mungo's Hospital where Harry and friends run into classmate Neville Longbottom and learn that his parents were tortured into insanity by Bellatrix Lestrange was cut because it required the construction of a new set. The main purpose of the action of the scene was relocated to the Room of Requirement after one of Dumbledore's army lessons. Also, to speed up the film's climax, several events in the ministry leading up to Harry's battle with Voldemort were removed, including the Brain Room. Mrs. Weasley's encounter with the Bogart, a grim old place, Ron, Hermione and Malfoy becoming prefects, and the appearance of Mungdungus Fletcher and Ferenz teaching divination followed suit. The character of Cretcher the household was included into the script only at Rowling's request and had a larger part in the book than in the film. In the novel, he is seen saving some of the Black family's artifacts with the Order of the Phoenix throw away, including a locket that ends up being extremely important in the seventh book. It was kind of tricky to raise that in our story because it's for so much later, Yates said. We figured we can probably introduce it later, and that approach we took. Whilst Cretcher remained, all the scenes involving Dobby were cut and his important actions given to other characters. Rita Skeeter, the journalist played by Miranda Richardson in The Goblet of Fire, was also removed. In the book, Hermione's blackmails her into writing an article that supports Harry as the rest of the wizarding world denies his claims. Richardson noted, It's never going to be the book on film exactly. They'll take certain aspects from the book and make it something that they hope is going to be commercial and that people want to see. Now, in saying all of that, it's not easy to take the longest Harry Potter book and streamline it into the shortest Harry Potter movie. But director David Yates does this quite well. For me, he creates an Order of the Phoenix that's entertaining and action-packed. This film takes another step towards the darker tone and versions of the Harry Potter universe. And I felt diehard Potter addicts will rejoice and that Yates had distilled J.K. Rowling's broad universe with care and reverence. Albeit Goldenberg cut a lot out in terms of writing the script, I still felt he caught a lot of the nuances from the book. One of the standouts in this film, though, has to be Emile de Staunton, as she steals the show as Dolores Umbridge, the uptight, mean, and frankly repulsive defense against the dark art teacher, and she just absolutely fits this role perfectly. I absolutely enjoyed Alan Rickman's portrayal of Severus Snape, and he's outdone himself once again. It's seldom that an actor does more with so little than in this role. And Rickman's portrayal is point on as one of the most complex and fascinating characters in all of the Harry Potter canon. I also particularly enjoyed Helena Bonham Carter as Bella Sixter Strange and her crazy take on this most iconic of roles. And I must say, newcomer in this film, Ivana Lynch played Luna Lovegood very well and did a, a more than suitable job. For me, though, one of the joys of this film is watching Daniel Radcliffe crow so impressively into this role of Harry. He digs deep into the character and into Harry's nightmares. It's a sensational performance, touching on all of the bases from tender to fearful, and he raises the bar once again on this performance. For me, one of the cores of the Harry Potter storyline is this intense battle between good and evil represented here by Harry and of course Voldemort it is one of the best aspects of the whole story and that's what makes it so fascinating to see play out on screen 
As a film, this was excellent. Yes, it leaves a lot of the book out, but maybe the book was slightly drawn out and went into too much detail about certain things, and this film got it exactly right. I feel this film is one of the strongest in the whole series, and it would make even non-believers believe in Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix gets an 8.5 out of 10.